welcome students for this ninth lecture on single phase system power definitions and various components in the previous classes we were discussing about the power factor and other power components for system in which the voltage and current both have harmonics and for that we have also derived the relationship for the power factor in terms of the power and thd component as well as in terms of the rms values of the voltage and currents and the respective power factors as you can see from these two expressions the first one is in terms of the ph p1 and the thd components of voltages and currents and the term fundamental power factor the basic definition used for the power factor is pys and this is in terms of the simply expressing the power in terms of the voltage and current components v1 i1 cos phi 1 v2 i2 cos phi 2 till vn in cos phi n and in the denominator we have vrms into irms this is very straight forward however this is not expressed in terms of the cos phi 1 for circuits analysis and finding its power factor this is more useful than this expression and for non thd com components and respective powers this is more useful okay they are same but there are two different ways of expressions that is fine and also we have seen that for resistive circuit the power factor is same one whether the voltage and current contains harmonics or they are simply purely sinusoidal wave form it doesn't matter the reason is very simple because the current is b by r it is linearly transformed into another wave form by a factor of 1 by r so shape remains same and we have proved in the previous class that if we make the p by s ratio it comes out to be 1 which is quite obvious because we expect for a resistive circuit to be have unity power factor similarly this power factor is zero for purely capacitive or purely inductive network this is because the p is equal to zero as the p is formed from b1 i1 cos phi1 and so on and this angle is zero if this angle is not zero angle is 90 degree the whole thing is equal to zero cos 90 is equal to zero so the power factor is zero for purely inductive or capacitive circuit irrespective of the fact that whether the voltage contains harmonics or not and for purely rl circuit the power factor pf is less than cos phi 1 okay the power factor is less than cos phi 1 as you can see from here this expression and for rc circuit the power factor is less than cos phi 1 here it means the power factor changes for 
आर एल आर सी और इवन आर एल सी सर्किट आर एल सी सर्किट इज इफेक्टिवली आइदर आर एल और आर सी डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द वैल्यू ऑफ एल एंड सी बट डेफिनेटली फॉर आर एल द पावर फैक्टर इज लेस दैन कॉस फाइव वन एंड फॉर दिस इज नॉट वन एंड फॉर आर सी सर्किट पावर फैक्टर इज ग्रेटर दैन कॉस फाइव वन दिस इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग फिनोमिना यू मैट बी थिंकिंग दैट हारमोनिक ऑलवेज रिड्यूसिस द पावर फैक्टर नॉट सो ट्रू इन केस ऑफ कैपेसिटेंस द अपोजिट हैपन्स एंड फॉर एनी आर्टेरी स्विस्ट वे फॉर्म फॉर एनी आर्टेरी स्विस्ट वे फॉर्म दिस इज अनादर एस्पेक्ट दिस इज फॉर पैसिव सर्किट स्टडी वेन वी हैव सिंपली आर एस सी कंपोनेंट But what happens when we have a switched wave form? Suppose we have a electrically fair load, power electronic based loads, and this asks some switching pattern of the current wave form. In that case, what can be said about the power factor in terms of the cos phi one? In that case, we have to study that wave form and find out the p and find out the s for that wave form and simply. find out the power factor also find out what is p1 by s1 which is nothing but cos phi 1 okay so in this way we can correlate the cos phi 1 and the cos phi the overall power factor okay. but we cannot see in advance like rl or rc circuit that power factor will increase or decrease than the fundamental power factor unless we study and make out these values i hope the point is clear let us go one another aspect that is the approximate value of power factor in distribution system in distribution system the thd component of current is relatively high than the thd component of voltage the dd component of current is far high than the value of voltage dd component also the ratio of ph by p1 is far for less than 1 theoretically if we, ha we have an ideal power system the value of thd i and thd b must be equal to 0 and the value of ph by p1 must be equal to 0 and finally the power factor becomes cos phi 1 so cos phi is same as cos phi 1 however when we make these two approximations and this one then we find that the power factor is approximately equal to 1 by square root 1 plus thd i square into cos phi 1 so what happened that in this expression this has gone to zero this has gone to zero and this has gone to zero so the overall expression is 1 by root 1 plus thd i square into cos phi 1 this is practically true for distribution system when these two conditions are satisfied okay and the conditions are the respective thd components of voltage are far less than current components and ph by p1 is far less than 1 this is actually true for most of the applications in power system in distribution system all right apart from that there are some more components or terms in powers that have to be that have to be discussed here the one of them is called non active power
Okay. Apart from that, there are some more terms in defining the power, and these are the non-active power n and distortion power d. Now, as you can see, their names. Okay. This is the non-active power. This is denoted by a term n. Okay. The idea is that that we have a print power and we have a real power p. Okay. So leaving s and p, whatever is there, because s contains everything and p contains the real power. So there must be something non-real power or non-active power, such that p square plus n square is equal to s square. So therefore, n must be equal to s square minus p square. It is just a definition about a term that s square minus p square. The remaining forms the non-active power, which is quite obvious because this is actually the overall power. Apparent power, and this is the active power. So overall square minus the active square must be some non-active square. You can also call it a power triangle in terms of S P N, except the Q is not there. So earlier we have a power triangle like this, P N. So this is N here. <coughs> So this relationship can be described by power triangle. Clear? And then there is another term called distortion power factor. Distortion power factor is denoted by term d, such that. D square plus Q square plus P square together makes it equal to S square. Therefore, D is equal to S square minus P square minus Q square and the whole square square root of that. So this is the value of D. You see this form. Power tetrahedron because it has three dimensions P, Q, and D. If you remember the previous discussion, it was P, Q, and H. So there is a P here, there is a Q here, and there is a D here. Three mutually perpendicular coordinates. And if we draw the powers based on this, we'll find a power tetrahedron. Okay. So this is distortion power D. This is non-active power N. One more thing that I would like to emphasize here. And it is about the term called utilization factor. Okay, it's called utilization factor. So, if you remember the power factor, power factor is also denoted by name called utilization factor. And the name is very interesting because it tells about the utilization of the available power. And as you can see, the P is the real power. Okay, this forms the real power, and this form the apparent power. And the ratio of real to apparent becomes the utilization factor. If the utilization factor is highest, that is one, then P is equal to S, and which again. Tells that the power factor is unity. The cos phi is one. And if it is less than 
s p is less than s means there is exists some q such that p square plus q square equal to s square or p square plus n square must be equal to s square one thing more here you can make out the relationship between n and the d what is relationship between n and d very simple because n square must be equal to q square plus d square so non active power can also be expressed as q square plus d square if we compare these two definitions then we can establish the equivalence between n q and t so i hope these concepts are very clear to you and they are very useful concept which will be helpful to understand the nature of the single phase systems for you as a professional engineer or as a academician or as a research scientist please go more deep into all these concepts revise them it may take time to grasp and to comprehend them but if you spare some time give time regularly you will be very happy to explore them in a much more depth now based on these concepts i will take some examples and explain how these concepts can be used to understand the nature of the power system the distributed power system at the same time the different parameters we can quantify so the first example is a uh, 2.4 from our nptel web book which i have uploaded in the moodle please go through it all these concepts which i have described and the examples based on that and there are questions in the chapter that which are unsolved however the answers are given so you can solve these questions to practice uh, and to understand these concepts in a much more better way so this is example 2.4 where we are given the system voltage bt so you can see here this is the system voltage bt given as 220 root 2 y n sin n omega t where n is equal to 135 we can have some more terms but for the sake of simplicity in analyzing we have taken three terms 1 3 and 5 and we are given the load as resistive part of it is 3 ohms here and the inductive part or ductive part is 4 ohm which is here this is being supplied at 50 hertz frequency and then we have to find these parameters number 1 instantaneous current it strenuous power we can add some more terms here that is p active p reactive and p rest because these are nothing but part of this power itself so once we know pt we can dissolve into we can resolve into these components then we have to find out the real power p q apparent power s power factor s also find out the non active power n and the power distortion power t okay so let us start how to approach this question and reach the correct solution so first step 
in solving this problem is to find out the current and to find out current we must know the various impedances at different frequencies. So, this is given to us at fundamental frequency. Therefore, the reactance at third harmonic will be 4 into 3 because the expression for x l is nothing but j into omega l. So, when omega is 3 omega, when omega is 5 omega, this will change by that factor. So, 3 into this into 3 omega, this is into 5 omega and these are being then used to compute the impedances for at each frequency z l 1, z l 3, z l 5. Okay. These are the values of impedances at different frequencies. Once we know these impedances then we compute the current from the phasor expression. So, I 1 will be nothing but B 1 y Z 1 and I 2 will be nothing but B 2 y Z 2 and I 3 will be nothing but V this is I 3 this is I 5 B 5 y Z 5 this is Z 3 this is B 3 because we do not have two component we have third and fifth harmonic. So, I 3 I 5 I 1 B 1 B 3 B 5. Now, we can use this phasor equations to convert back into time domain expressions. So, I L 1 is nothing but this B 1 Y impedance is 1 5 and this is omega frequency 1 this is sine impedance theta z 1 you can say. Here it is b 3 this is b 3 because by 3 it is by n and this is the impedance at third harmonic this is the angle of third harmonic. Similarly, b 5 by impedance and angle of impedance. So, the overall expression for the current is this one. You see there are three components, one for each frequency, this is the fundamental and this is the third harmonic and this is the fifth harmonic. Okay. Once we know the voltage as a function of time and current as a function of time, then the next step is to compute the instantaneous power P t and once we know P t we can resolve into its various components. So, what is P t here? P t is product of V and I you can see from here P t equal to B t into I t and this is B t and this is I t. If you want you can also write in series form in simply addition form of this because this is nothing but 220 root 2 by 1 sin omega t plus 220 root 2 by 3 sin 3 omega t plus 220 root 2 by 5 sin 5 omega t and this multiplied by this term here. So, 3 into 3 okay, 3 terms into these 3 terms. We have to arrange them in a proper way and the guideline is that we will arrange them in similar frequency and dissimilar frequency terms. This guideline will help us to define the various power parameters in a more coherent way. So, as I said that the P t will be the product of these 
three sign terms for voltage and three sign terms for current. So you will get actually nine terms. But I I have shown here here three into three, how much? Basically. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Something I have left it out, so you have to complete it. The p rest power I have left it out plus p rest. And what is p rest here? You have to add it. The p rest is nothing but voltage sigma. So n is equal to one, three, five, two, twenty. Uh, root two y n sine n omega t, and this multiplied by the current series, that is I h, where h varies from one three five, but h is not equal to n. Okay, this series has to come here. So I have left it. You please complete it, add it here, and also put that point here. Now. The one minus cos omega t terms. This term at fundamental, this term at third harmonic, and this term at the fifth harmonic. These three terms form the p active. Okay, that is this one. I'll put by shape. You can understand. This is this one. And this one, and this one, this form the p active, and the remaining sine two omega t term form the p reactive. Okay, so this one is this, this, and this. Forms the p reactive. And the rest term are from this whole series. This is p rest. Okay, this is p rest. Now, once we know. The these components, these parameters of PT or components of PT, then we can find out very easily what is the real power P, what is the ejected power Q, and what is the power factor. Okay, the capital P is given by here sum of P1 plus P3 plus P5. And these are the average value of active components. It is this value actually. Okay, it is this value and this value and this value. So together it makes five nine two seven watts. And what is Q? The Q is sum of Q one plus Q three plus Q five, which are the peak values of the P reactive terms. So as you see it here, the first one is the seven seven four four peak value. The second one is four two one. So actually, I have to add it like four two one point seven nine plus nine four point six seven. Okay, this will make around five sixteen point four five, and that total value is. Eight thousand two hundred sixty point four five volt amperes. Check the dimension carefully. This is BAR. This is a baht. So the dimension of P is bahts. The dimension of Q is bars. Volt ampere reactives here. Okay. Then we also compute the value of S, which is product of BR MS into I R M S. B R M S is nothing but 
BDC square, this is BDC square here. So, this is BDC square plus B1 square plus B3 square and so on. BDC is 0, 0 here, so there is no question of BDC. So, basically, it is B1 square and B3 square and B5 square. And then this is I1 square, this is I3 square, this is I5 square and so on. This is, we can write completely B5 square. This gives the total apparent power of 10492 volt amps or we can also write in terms of the kilo amp volt amperes it is 10.492 kilo kBa. Be careful in denoting the dimensions of S, Q and P. The dimension is here kBa, note it and dimension here is bars, the dimension here is watts. Now, once we know P, Q and S, we can find out the other term, the power factor is P by S. So, the power factor is P by S, P we know, S we know, so there is 0 0.56 lagging. How do I know this is lagging? Because Q is negative, overall Q is negative. Okay. If you see the Q value, I have not taken sign into account, but actually they are negative values. My minus 77 minus 7744 and this is here minus 421, this is minus 94. So, this shows the nature of load is inductive. Obviously, it is inductive because we have taken this inductive load here, you can see it here, the load is inductive. So, the power factor will be lagging, that is why the power factor is lagging 0.56. This is different from fundamental power factor. The fundamental power factor can be found from P F 1 as P 1 by S 1. Okay. This is also cosine angle between B 1 and I 1. And the angle if you look at here, this is cost 53.13. Okay. This is cost, cost 53.13 and this angle is is basically cos 53.13 is 0.6. So, this is 0 0.6. So, you see here very clearly that the power factor which is cos phi is equal to 0 0.56 since it is inductive load. So, this is less than cos phi 1 which is 0 0.6. So, we have proved the concept, okay. but here we have found for generalized RL circuit is true because it is a RL circuit. The next computation belongs to the computation of N and D. So, n is nothing but s square minus p square and the d is given as s square minus p square minus q square. So, these are their values for n and d. Okay. So, this example gives you a clear idea that how to compute these various parameters to define the power quality of the system. Question number 2.5 is similar to this, except that we have added a DC component in the current IDC. This is IDC, this is part of IAC. Okay. So, this contains kind of a IDC plus IAC which has two parts the fundamental and the fifth 
थर्ड हारमोनी द वोल्टेज हैज फंडामेंटल एंड थर्ड हारमोनी ऑब्वियसली पी डी सी विल बी जीरो बिकॉज पी डी सी इज बी डी सी इंटू आई डी सी एंड बी डी सी इज नथिंग बट जीरो सो दिस इज जीरो इंटू टू बिकम जीरो सो देर इज नो चेंज इन एक्टिव पावर पी एक्चुअली द ओनली डिफरेंस इज द आर एम एस वैल्यू ऑफ आई विल बी डिफरेंट एंड हैंस द एस विल बी डिफरेंट एंड हैंस द पावर फैक्टर विल बी डिफरेंट सो इवन दो देर इज नो डी सी इन द वोल्टेज बट ऑल द क्वान्टिटीज आर अफेक्टेड यू कैन सॉल्व इन दिस सिमिलर फैशन दैट वी हैव डन द प्रीवियस वन In example 2.6, we have voltages components which consist of DC and AC terms. For example, if you see this equation, this is the voltage. Okay, the BDC is 10 volt. And B n by n square is this value for n is equal to one three five seven, but in this case we have considered up to fifth harmonic one three five. Okay, and also for that voltage we are given the nature of current is also consisting of DC and AC components. Therefore, based on these configurations, we need to compute the instantaneous power here and P active, P reactive, P DC, P rest, all these components, and then P P one, P H, then Q Q one. Q H and then S S one S H N and D. Comment upon the result. You have to tell about the rating based on these parameters, the rating of the conductor, okay, and how the unnecessary components can be avoided. The approach is very simple. it consists of same steps that we have done earlier okay that we have to first find out the instantaneous power instantaneous power is nothing but the product of b and i so since we are given b and i terms so this is b and this is i we have to multiply them while multiplying we must remember that we have to arrange in a similar and dissimilar frequency terms if we know that then arranging of all the power terms become quite easy so what is that so this is dc here i dc this is i dc this is b dc so therefore when we multiply then we will get the component tan into Two, so this become twenty here. This one, and then ten into this two. Twenty means two hundred. This becomes two hundred here. Second one, so this term into this term becomes this one. And then two into two thirty become four sixty. This term, and the remaining terms are. the ac terms where ac into ac so two series are multiplied this is ac into ac terms this one and these ac and ac are further resolved into two more variations that is ac ac nn and ac ac H H H N. So this is actually P A C A C N N, and 
this is AC AC not NN here because NN will come later so I will say this is P AC AC simply ok P AC AC and this term is P DC DC this term is P DC AC and this is P AC DC this AC AC is further resolved into two more terms that is similar frequency term and dissimilar frequency term ok do it carefully once we get these parameters then we can give them separately this is p dc dc this is p active this is p reactive this is p rest now p rest consists of components which is p dc ac p ac dc and p ac ac with dissimilar frequency term so this is p ac ac n h this is p dc ac this is p ac dc ok and these are basically similar frequency terms ok and from this we can compute the rest of the parameters. So, from this computation onwards we can find out different components. Okay. And these components are the real power first. So, the real power is capital P which is the average value of the whole term obviously this is equal to dc part p dc and this is the b i cos phi equivalent so substitute for different values of n we will find this is n is equal to 1 then 3 5 7 and so on we can go up to 2 or 3 terms and we will get this value as negative. The interesting point is this this time the pH is negative. Negative means the harmonic power real power is being fed back to the system from the load. The system is such that the power is fed back into the source and therefore the total power is sum of these three components. Now it is described here the DC power consumed is 20 watt, the fundamental power is 3983.71 watts and active power contributed by rest of the term is minus 43. Okay. The total real power will be sum of these components which is I think 20 plus 39.71 point seven one minus forty three point four eight this comes out to be three nine six zero so this is three nine six zero point two three watts and this is less than the fundamental power actually because of the minus 40 sign 43 sign the rest of the terms contribute to negative real power. Similarly we can compute 
the active power capital Q. Okay, the reactive power is summation of the peak values of the p reactive terms. So, this is the peak value into sin 30 n for n is equal to 1 3 n. So, this is the fundamental reactive power the remaining terms and they sum up to 2300 plus 175.75 this is the total reactive power and this is uh, this value q1 is not 4600 rather it is 4600 sin 30 actually so please correct it this is into sin 30 degree which is 2 3 0 0 okay and plus 175 so 2 3 0 0 plus 175.75 becomes 2 4 7 5 0.75 bars ok. So, this is the total reactive power in the system and once we know this then we can find out the BRMS IRMS we have taken up to 9 terms here and is equal to 9 and then the apparent power is BRMS into RMS which is 5000 66.36 volt amps. The fundamental apparent power is P1 I1 is 4600 volt amperes and the apparent power contributed by harmonics that is SH is BH into IH H. This is BH B, B3 onwards B2 is 0 this is IH and therefore this is SH. And based on that, we can find out the non-active power n is s square minus p square, which is 3160.8 bars bh, and distortion power is s square minus p square minus q square is 1965.136 volt amperes. The displacement factor cos phi 1 is p1 by s1. 0 0.866 lagging ok this is also actually cos 30 same as the angle between the fundamental of voltage and current that you can see in the beginning 30 n for n is equal to 1 it is 30 degree lag ok. So, basically it is cos 30 lag. and the cos phi is p y s ok. The p is 3960.217 this is 5067 this is 0 0.781 lagging. In this case also you can see the cos phi is less than cos phi 1 because cos phi 1 is 0 0.866 and this is 0 0.781 ok. So, in this case also this is most common case in case of power distribution system because generally the load is inductive and hence the effect of harmonics is normally on the reduction of the harmonics. Now, these waveform have been plotted using MATLAB simulation and you can see that this represents the voltage which is quite rich in third and fifth harmonic you can see the shape of this is not sinusoidal it is flat topped and it shows that the third fifth seventh odd harmonics are there in the system voltage. This is the current close to square waveform so it looks like it is a rectifier circuit 
and this b into i becomes the instantaneous power pt so this is pt now pt has various parts such as p active this is p reactive okay and this is p rest this is total apparent power s this is average active power means real power p this is q and this is distortion power d not in watt but in a bars or b you can say and this is non active power n you can also plot d as well okay so this is the complete study of the single phase system and there are questions at the end of the chapter please solve them there are answers also given so you can verify your answers and if you have some difficulty we can have one interactive class to address those doubts so with this we complete the first unit in fact second unit on single phase systems we have covered various important terms and definitions of the powers in presence of harmonics and we also have solved some examples and understood these concepts in the next class we will study three phase systems and we will extend these concepts to three phase systems and see how the three phase system is more effective as compared to single phase system and what are the problems in terms of the power quality so we will continue in the next class